All right, here's what it looks like so far. As you can see here, I've got some of my tools and since so I'm going through it. First, you wanna take off this panel here, disconnect the 12 volt uh, negative terminal. And you can see some of the paneling and this is the bottom seat, which you can see here. Right. This is uh, the trim for the battery in the front. This is the trim for the trunk. Um, this is a side panel that goes right here, over here. And you can see where I'm running all of these uh, cables here. This is some of the bed, the trunk liner, the bed liner, I guess. This is that one compartment here. And this piece is uh, this part here. It's a sub mount, holds some of the stuff in place. You can see the subwoofer um, amplifier they got going. And you can see how I'm trying to snake the cables through here so that I'm using these uh, eight feet, one slash zero gauge wires here so that I can power up the 2000 watt inverter I've got going on here. So we're gonna put this inside here. So that way we can close the, the trunk lid. We'll be able to hide it. And then because the, has this, we can tie into this to put a, uh, an actual plug a uh, mount plug and then we can cut a hole in here and we'll be able to put it here onto the onto this panel so that way we can just plug directly in and if we need to access it we'll be able to open it up and and get to it and then um that will be and then obviously i'm going to need some other components so the other components i'm going to be using are over here the inverter is so big and i'll trip it with the capacitor so we need a relay we're gonna use this 200 amp relay here. We're gonna wire it using this resistor so that it slow charges the uh, the capacitors on that inverter doesn't actually uh, hurt it. We're gonna use this um, uh, Hall effect sensor here in order to detect how much um, real-time power usage we're using so that we can power some uh, some different things. And then we have the gloves if we, if we need them, but for right now we haven't. And don't forget to always shut off your Model 3 before you mess with it and turn off the battery terminal. And so uh, we'll keep going from here. All right, so we're showing how to disassemble the Model 3. Let's be quick. Uh, we took off the top panel here, disconnected the 12 volt battery terminal. That way the car actually will, won't power back on. And this is after you've gone inside the cabin and you've powered it off. Some of the tools that we're using here, rubber gloves, some of the trim pieces that we've done. And we're doing this today. This is how we're kind of a, diagramming it all out um, with the different connections. And what we're doing right now is putting in this inverter. You can see we've run this eight foot, uh, one slash zero gauge electrical wire because it's 2000 watts. And we've uh, drilled a hole into the side uh, carpet paneling, routed it through inside here near the subwoofer and the amplifier, zip tied it up together through the top there. And we're gonna attach all of this here to the uh, DC converter, which is 400 volt that steps down to 12 volt. And you can see that we're running it back up here. And we're going through, <clears throat> through the side panel here, over to there. And uh, yeah, so hopefully this works and then we'll be able to have 2000 watts of power for when another power, power outage hits. So this is a quick video. As you can see, the car looks a-okay. I'm a-okay. And uh, you can see I've run this big heavy duty one zero cable here with this other one. These go behind the panel here, which is hard to see, which I'm routing through. That is the amplifier for the subwoofer here. And then I punch the holes through here, which go to this inverter. And then I have a, a relay set up here with a resistor to slow the charge on this so the capacitors won't overload the system got my fuse here and here's the problem so it lights up and it says that it says 3.6 and it's blue and it makes a noise but i don't know what 3.6 actually means so i gotta research but hey i'm okay and the car's okay so now we just got to take the next step to figure out what's going on all right here's the day two of the journey here so here's originally what the diagrams and everything look like. 
and now you can see I've been trying to trace down the voltages. There's a voltage drop somewhere on here, and I'm not sure why. So we can see that it's uh, showing up as 14 volts, which is good after the resistor, but before the resistor it's at 4.3, and on that pole, which is this one here, 30 on the relay, it's showing 4.3 volts, whereas the other side is at 4.14.6. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. And on the inverter, if I measure both poles, it's 4.33. So when I look at the car here, you can see how we're working in the dark here and whatnot, but um, across those two poles, 4.33 volts. But if I measure from here over to here or here, it's 14.4 volts. If I measure on that side of the resistor, it's 14.4 volts. And on that side of the resistor, it's only four volts. And then consequently up there, it's also incorrect too. So I'm not really sure what's going on down here. It's my work running it through and zip tying it up with this heavy 107 gauge. And when I check over here, it's 14 volts as well, which is good. Run all my cables, but I'm not sure why it's uh, not lightened up. As a word of caution, always make sure you uh, undo your battery before you do any modifications. So continuing journey, here we go. All right, this is day three continued. We're gonna see what we can do again. Disconnected the power there, opened up all of the doors, lowered all of the windows. I've uh, turned off that, heard the clunk, checked it with the multimeter. This is completely off. This is the cable that I've run in the back here for the uh, inverter, which you can see here. And you can see it's coming out over here um, and here with my with my relay resistor to lower the uh, ch initial charge for the capacitors and then my fuse. Um, I think I know what's going on here. So I think the problem is, is that I wired this up here and it's not in series, it's in parallel. And I need to have an additional terminal so I can make this thing go either or rather than doing it this way. I think I'm dividing the current, and that's why this leg here is, uh, uh, what is it, four volts or something? Four to four volts or so. Because this is the only leg that seems like it's not right, and consequently that terminal on that side and on that side are different. So I'm gonna hope that by putting this in series, I can, I can fix this, so here we go. All right, here's our day four, I guess, experiment. So I got some uh, advice from uh, one of the good bloggers on Tesla who's done this before. And uh, he told me just, you know, plug it directly into the DC converter and, and see what happens. See if you're still getting um, low voltage. So I plug it in directly. I have not turned it on and it's off right now, but you can see that it's showing 14.65 volts across the poles here. So that's an excellent sign. I've left it plugged here for a little bit, I don't know, 20 seconds or so, I guess. And uh, that way it's able to hopefully theoretically charge up the capacitor a little bit. I'm using actually a pretty good cage cable, except for the poor resistor here. It's uh, so small that I had to terminate it with some 14 gauge. Now I'm not actually running anything with this thing yet, but that's just to power up the capacitor. So let's uh, undo it and see what happens if we try to plug it in and charge it now, or turn it on. All right, we bypassed the resistor. While everything is still live, we're plugging in directly. We've got everything going. I guess let's turn it on and see what happens. All right, it's detecting 13.4 volts, 120 hertz. So, uh, yeah. So it seems like this might be working. Thank you to the uh, Tesla bloggers. Let's uh, try plugging something in and see how this thing goes. So here we go. So I found the kilowatt meter. You can see right now it's registering 120 volts up here. Get the clear out of there. And it says about 122 here. The uh, Right now there's no pull. It's 0 0.01 amps, so there's nothing really going on. And right now there's no watts going. And it's operating at 60 hertz. So that's fantastic. That's 13.4 volts for the vehicle. Um, when I was checking up before in the terminals, it's over 14 volts, so... I guess by the time it hits here, because of the capacitors and the load, it drops it. Now I had to do this a little tricky. So it's plugged directly in here for the positive and directly here on the 
other terminal for the negative. This is the step down converter from 400 volt back down to 14 volts or so. It's detecting 13.3 here. But I wasn't able to plug directly into this thing because the capacitors would uh, trip it. Or at least that's what um, a lot of people noticed. So what I did was uh, I took that fuse there and I wired it up to that real to the uh, sorry not to the relay I got rid of that to this resistor so I went from the fuse to this resistor and then from the resistor back to here and then when I measured it it was measuring up at um, uh, 14 volts so it was getting power I let that sit for like I don't know 20 30 seconds or so and then I immediately took this resistor off plugged directly in and then uh, yeah you can see it so now we can do some tests. All right, here we go, test one. Um, we've got the kilowatt meter here plugged in with the inverter, which is now on. We're running this inside to a full-size fridge. And uh, let's just see what happens here when I plug this in. So you can see it peaked out at 1300 watts. And now it's running at 142, 145. I guess it's going down. says it's using about 1.37 amp, 137 watts. It's running at 120 volts. So let's go inside and see if this is uh, truly working. can hear it. You can see there's the light. It's cold. It's a working. That's a cool. All right. So now as we can see, we're um, dropping the load a little bit. We're down to 13 volts with the um, two cables plugged in here. The one on the yellow is going to the freezer. One of the orange is going to the fridge. 117 uh, volts being Output it through AC, 13.03 DC. Let's check on the freezer and the fridge, see how they're doing. So, we got power coming here, our cable. And if we follow over here, there's our temperature readings. We've got light. It got cold, so effectively, yeah, the answer is both. Powering off when we checked uh, when we checked the fridge with the kilowatt, it shows 127 um, watts per hour. I think the inrush was about 1350 when I looked at it through the kilowatt. So, provided you get through that inrush, you should be able to run this thing for weeks essentially without power. So, I guess now what we can try with the next test is. That uh, air conditioner over there in the distance that you can see, and uh, seeing if we can juggle some more uh, stuff here, what we can get to for 2,000. The idea being that we would run um, cooling, essentially refrigeration for food, to preserve it, and uh, cooling for us because uh, the South gets hot. So, to be continued. All right, this is the last test of the night. So far, we have an inverter hooked up to the 400 volt to 14 volt step down converter. This is a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. In test one, we were able to power a full size refrigerator. The peak was about 1350 watts for the inrush when you first turn it on. The average load was about 127 to 135 watts, um, which is easily under what this thing can do. Um, test two, we simultaneously had a fridge and a freezer on at the same time. It was a five cubic foot uh, chest freezer from Arctic King. And I think the calculator watts on that one is 50 watts regular, 150 watts peak and rush or something. Test three here. We're gonna test out this uh, air conditioning running simultaneously with the uh, fridge and the freezer here. So let's see what we can do. All right. So we're powered up. Things turning on. Compressor hasn't the compressor hasn't kicked in yet. But right now what we can see is that we're running half an amp. 60 watts. So let's see if we can force it to power down and get even colder. Alright, let's uh... 
little bit in the air. I guess 62 is the lowest thing this will go. In a moment, that compressor should kick on. And that's probably the technique that's fairly cold right here. And now we just kind of have to wait. In the meantime, our other setup here. You can tell that it's a uh, 13.4 volts, so the load is uh, pretty consistent and steady without the compressor. Let's go check the fridge, and then we'll come back and check on this. Um, let's see. So if you listen quietly, you'll hear the compressor running. There's the light. So the power's on. We have independent temperature monitors for the chest freezer and for this fridge. Unfortunately, I had to unplug this one, but the load is very small on it. So this fridge is technically going to be the fridge and the air conditioner, which are higher wattage usage items anyway. Now out here, let me get my grubby shoes on here. All right, we can see it's still running. The inverter hasn't tripped. Let's check the watts on this one. Yeah, 60 watts. Well, the compressor hasn't kicked on. I guess because it's too cold out here. Maybe I can force it. Let's see if we can force it. Check the load. Nope. I guess that's it. I guess that's it, folks. So you can power the fan of a window air conditioning unit and you can power a full size fridge or you can power a fridge and a freezer, but I haven't been able to verify the compressor yet. So when I get that one kicked off, we'll try that one again.